Hey everybody, it's Jason Blah here and it's time for another breakfast chat. And today, I'm going to chat with you guys about something I don't talk about very often. Also, you know, people are always asking, what are you eating? Uh, not very complicated, guys. I'm cutting hard right now. It's chicken, rice, and vegetables, and water. Not complicated. I'm eating very bro right now. And other people are saying, hey, are you still doing vertical? I did the vertical diet to bulk to 241. I'm not bulking. I am following a lot of elements of the vertical diet that I really enjoy, but I'm not following it. Meaning I eat a lot of vegetables that wouldn't be allowed on it, and I don't drink any liquid calories. And I mean, for me, it's pretty much chicken, steak, Greek yogurt, rice, vegetables. It's what I eat. Different types of mixed vegetables every day. It's what I do. And I eat about a pound and a half of vegetables. Every meal, throw in eight ounces of vegetables. I weigh it out. So, very, very bro. Uh, I'm a voracious overeater, flexible dieting, and if it fits your macros, is out. Doesn't work for us. It's for skinny people when they want to cut. People who've been skinny their whole life do that. People who've been fat don't do that. You're going to stay fat. Now, back over to the point. Uh, and, and that's because of the calories in, calories out, by the way. It's that you can't eat a calorie deficit eating Pop-Tarts and ice cream if you have a real appetite. These are usually skinny guys, and most of them are using drugs to suppress their appetite. Now let's get over to the point, because that's what this video is about. Now, disclaimer. Disclaimer. I'm not endorsing the use of any sort of PED. Uh, I am not going to turn this into a PED channel and risk losing my channel and all sorts of other problems. More plates, more dates can do that for you guys. More power to it. So, over to the, the point, I had someone ask me what I thought was a ludicrous question. To me, it was ludicrous. And he's like, hey, could I take HGH4 recovery from training? And it's like, what? That, that's really like saying, can I go find the single most expensive alcohol in the entire world and use it to get a buzz every night? Okay, but there's stronger, there's stronger alcohols than that $5,000 a bottle of champagne that you just bought. Like if you're just trying to get a buzz. That actually do a better job that cost less. And that's why I thought it was ludicrous. Okay. And it seems like people who ask these questions don't know the basics. They don't know the history of sports, what people use. Um, and, and they have a lot of misconceptions. And, and I think the fitness world makes that worse because it's always, oh, we have a replacement for testosterone. This will give you all the benefits or some of the benefits of taking testosterone. That's how they always put it, whatever new product it is, without all the side effects. There's not really a lot of side effects to moderate testosterone use. This is not... The majority of people don't have side effects. On some very unlucky ones do, most people do not. Human clinical trials on healthy lifters that looked at muscle growth kind of found the same thing. The amounts they were given generally didn't cause side effects. You might be unlucky. Roll the dice. If you roll the dice, you know it's going to come up 7 or 11 sometimes. It's just the nature of things. But that's why I'm like, that's what people use for recovery. Okay. No one uses growth hormone by itself for recovery. Number one, it's not very good. We could argue that by itself, it doesn't do anything. We know it doesn't cause muscle growth by itself. Okay. And these are studies looking at like $1,000 to $2,000 worth being used every month. Most of you guys aren't going to drop a grand or two. Let's just, let's just be honest here. You're not going to drop a grand or two. You're not going to drop $1,000 every month for your special supplements. All right. Most of us are not that hardcore. Causes no muscle growth. Maybe a little fat loss. Maybe a little bit of tendon repair. But again, there are better things for fat loss. Uh, causes no muscle growth, arguably as to how much recovery it even gives by itself. What do endurance athletes use? I'm, I'm actually think people don't realize this. What do marathon runners and cyclists use for recovery? They use testosterone. That is your baseline. This will enhance recovery. 
from a cost effectiveness and, and the ability to enhance recovery, testosterone is king. Nothing, nothing competes with it. Dollar for dollar versus the amount of recovery you get. There's nothing even close. Okay. Be clear on that. And that's why people, that, that came up before in, in my comments and someone said, well, I'm not trying to be this giant jack useless prep. I'm like, what are you talking about? Guys on low doses of testosterone don't get jacked. Naturals don't get that big, to be honest. Let's just be perfectly honest. People on low doses of testosterone who are not training for maximum size don't get that big. Okay, what was the Lance Armstrong stack? Everybody knows this. What is Lance Armstrong, the famous doper, when everyone else is using too, by the way? What did he admit to? Testosterone, growth hormone, EPO. That's what he used. Okay, the growth hormone seems to amplify some of the benefits of testosterone. It creates a synergistic effect. And it does it without adding additional side effects because, again, how much is someone going to use? A lot of endurance athletes don't go over 200 milligrams. Yes, that is super physiological. To get benefits from growth hormone, something every single coach and athlete has noted over the decades, you have to have super physiological levels of testosterone to see any real benefit from it. Okay, you have to. And we come back over to, you know, again, price tag. What is someone going to spend for, for testosterone? Like $20 a month. People are probably, people who are buying supplements, their jaw is probably dropping when I just said that. For those sort of amounts of testosterone, $20 a month. Okay. $50 a month is like a full bloom cycle. See where I'm going with this? This, this, is, this is the sort of money people are paying for over-the-counter supplements, thinking they're going to enhance a recovery. That, that's what the price tag is. That is what it is, guys. I'm sorry. That's the reality. What's someone going to spend for growth hormone? Generics? You're going to spend $250, $300 a month. You want the good stuff, you're going to pay at least $500. Five to seven hundred minimum. That's what you're going to pay every month. Hey, you people are not. You're not going to pay that for a little bit of recovery. That probably isn't going to be there. Okay, if someone wants recovery, the first thing they add any athlete is testosterone, and it has a lot of fringe benefits. There's a reason it's popular. There is a reason every single enhanced athlete uses testosterone as a base. Well, not all of them. Ninety nine percent. There's some outliers. It's a reason for that. It improves mood, it improves confidence, sex drive, performance, well-being. Okay. Top of the recovery and muscle growth. That's what people use for recovery. That, that's what they use. If someone is not trying to get big, lighter weight athletes who don't want any more androgen load, they add growth hormone, if they have a lot of money. They got money to spare, right? It's actually not that easy to get in comparison. You have to source it, it's not as easy to get. It really isn't. And there's a lot of garbage out there. Well, there used to be, it seems to be less of a problem today. So this whole question of, of someone asking, oh, could I use, use this for recovery? You, you could. But that is not the standard approach. That, that's not what most people do. It's not cost effective. It's not efficient. And it's probably not going to give you the results that you want. Okay. A lot of really wealthy athletes use a lot of it because of the myths around it. But they, they're spending a lot of money. Okay. They're spending a lot of money on it. And again, because they want something that's not going to make them too much bigger. A lot of basketball players. And it's easy for them to get through drug testing. That's why. By itself, you're not going to see anything. You're just going to throw away hundreds of dollars a month. And probably see minimal to zero benefit. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.